welcome to Whiskey Fans. I'm Tony, and welcome to Which One Wednesday. So we thought we'd do a throwback to the comparison I did a few weeks back on the Penelope's. And we have all the builds here from 2022, build one through build four. Uh, actually, build one here is on my left, and it works up to build four. And so excited to take a blind tasting of these. I've got these all poured. They've got numbers one through four. And we're going to do a quick switch around, and we're just going to All right, before we get into the nose and taste, and just a little bit about the bottle. Like I said, this Penelope Architect builds one through four. These come in at a nice proof of 104. These have a French oak stave finish, and they did a collaboration with Tonellery Rideau of France, which uh, is a market leader in the barrel manufacturing, and this is a state-of-the-art process. So French Oak Stave finishing is not new. Um, I'm first aware of it with the Maker's Mark 46. Uh, this elevated their game. Uh, the nice thing about, I believe, the Penelope is that coming in at 104 versus the 94. So the 104 is a little bit more in my wheelhouse. Uh, so these are all straight bourbons. I do believe from some research that these were distilled in Indiana, so more than likely an MGP. Uh, but the back of the bottle does say from the collaboration bottled in Bardstown. Uh, we know that Penelope, uh, the corporate office is up in New Jersey. So I'm um, really dying to do a testing. I've tasted all of these. Don't get me wrong. They're all great. Um, they all do have uh, interesting little architecture on the back. that kind of gives you an indication of what you're going to experience, like fruit on the nose and fruit on the palate and the persistency and the oak integration. Uh, each of them are fairly balanced if you look through one through four on the back, uh, but a little bit different. Interesting note, too, on build one, it's down in the bottom right on the label, and then the builds two through four were up here on the top. So that was an interesting uh, find for me. I didn't get started until build two. I was actually on a business trip down in Texas, was able to pick this bottle up. It's not distributed widely. Um, we normally have to pick these up in Kentucky. They're fairly inexpensive these are run about 60 bucks i picked them up at total wine and if you compare that to the maker's mark um, i think this one's around 40 bucks for the 46 uh, so with the more proof and these are aged four to five and a half years and i don't have an age statement on the maker's mark but um, this makes it nice and it is a four grain which makes it even more interesting all right we're going to try to do this as blindly as possible i really enjoyed watching slb when they had a patron send in bills i believe one through three and they had no idea and what they were drinking and they had such of a difference in the characteristic on the nose and the tasting they thought that they were all four different or three different bottles so knowing that i know they're all the same we're just going to mix them around and i'm having my assistant mama t she's going to come in here and she's going to mix these around for me and i'll close my eyes <laughs> so i don't know what she's doing all right so mama t had them all mixed up for me going in for the nose it says you're supposed to get a little bit of a creme brulee uh, a little bit light fruit on the nose i do experience that i'm going to tell you when i do give my taste smell my nose and my tasting i don't get exactly the same i might say you know it's a dark fruit or come across like that i'm not going to be able to specify a lot of times but there are instances where it just jumps right out at you uh, giving you the licorice and things of that nature i've not really attuned my palate into being able to do such but it keeps getting better and better so just it's a journey and that's where i am in this process so here we go So the taste on glass number one, it came across a little bit of the fruit, a little bit of the creme brulee, uh, came across the mid palate, uh, kind of finished. I still were carrying forward uh, the oak finish and it stayed with me with a, a nice finish. Uh, so not bad at all. It's um, let's just compare this to glass number two. I'm getting a lot more fruit on this particular one. And I say this is lighter. It translates from the nose to the palate in the same manner. And I'm not getting as much of that um, oakiness from the stave. So I would have probably ranked these based upon such. Um, knowing that this one here on my left feels like it's the... the All right, let's move on to glass number three. 
a lot of similarities to number two. Um, not that it's glass number, or not that it's build number two, it's just glass number two in this change of roux. This one feels like it um, gives me more of that creme brulee. Um, definitely up front, it's firing that part of the palette. Comes across, I think, a little bit more balanced on the oak. Um, this one I'm really enjoying a lot. Um, I'm going to put this here. This one here, this glass number one I tasted, have, was the most oak, oak forward. I'll back these up a little bit. Glass number two, I thought it was a little bit more subtle subtle when it comes to the oak and more fruit and this one was just um, all over the, and was really all right light. the verdicts in they're all splendid i mean if you have build one or build four i think you're going to get the same experience there's some subtle differences as i'd mentioned there's some fruit forwardness there's some that have more persistency uh, there's some that have a little bit more of the uh, french oak stave a little bit longer of a finish uh, but at the end of the day I'm going to say that my glass number three that I tried is the winner for me out of the four builds. And that is number two. And that's actually the very first one that I've opened and procured. Like I said, it's a great buy at $60. I know that uh, half the things you might seem seemingly buy out there on the market comes from MGP. But um, it's really interesting when other curators are doing these uh, cool things like secondary finishes. I know that they have like a Valencia, the French oak staves with the collaboration. Um, I know that there's some other vendors like Nulu doing similar types of things. But I got to tell you, um, they really have it going on. I really enjoy their barrel strength four grain. Uh, that comes in about a 115, 116 proof. That's right in my wheelhouse. Uh, I know part of the Big Bourbon Club, which I'm a member of, out of Louisville, Kentucky, they just completed a pick of a toasted barrel, and uh, they went up to the New Jersey office and was able to do that, so I really can't wait until that's in stock and available for purchase. Uh, but I got to tell you, you can't go wrong. $60 is a buy. Uh, any of the builds, I'd say, will um, hit you really well from the standpoint of getting that French oak and uh, kind of similar to the 46 from Maker's Mark. But um, another plug here, we do have Rye Madness. We have the final round, round three, coming up on Friday. So stay tuned for that, and happy Wednesday, and cheers.